say. My wife and I were talking. She made a comment. Well, we got into a debate about quiet coaching. Because yeah. Coach Donnie is very calm, cool, and collected when he coaches. On the bench. And then you told me. Well, you remember me, the coach? Let me preface that. I would say about 80% of the time I'm pretty calm and I'll get fiery if I feel like the team needs a boost of energy or if the ref is not good or if the players are are not doing what they're supposed to do. But my wife, she said, she said, she made a comment, she said, I'm too quiet. And oftentimes, People think good coaching means you're yelling all the time because that's what you see on TV. And that's what, what might, you might see in the highlights on ESPN. You just see a coach yelling all the time. But one thing I've learned is that if you have to yell all the time, you're doing the work for your players and you're not preparing your players well enough. Oh, I got moated. So i think yelling is actually a very good motivator but obviously if done too much you can break your players down and demotivate them if you're on them too hard uh, also coaches need to be more aware of if i keep yelling at them for doing something and they're not doing it maybe it's my fault maybe i didn't teach them well enough because uh, you can't expect them to change things during a game you have so you know so many hours of practice to change things and some of the great coaches that I think exemplify this, John Sparall, Karsh Karai, both exceptional U.S. national team coaches, Coach Alenkno, who's the coach for Zenit Kazan, one of the top club teams in the world. What about basketball coaches? Basketball, Greg Popovich. Uh, he's also a calm, collected coach. Phil Jackson, they, they call him the Zen master for a reason. He yells occasionally to get fired up or when he gets competitive, but... Majority of the time, he's thoughtful, he communicates. And a lot of times in basketball, coaches have to yell and football because it's way louder. Mm -hmm. you got to communicate over so much more noise. But yeah, I, it's, it's taken a lot of practice for me to be calm and collected because I'm naturally a very, very competitive person. You just, I mean, my wife, she was actually shocked when she first saw me play volleyball because... I was talking a lot of trash and like getting really amped up and really angry. Unstoppable! <laughs> That's me. Yeah. That was you. Yeah. So yeah, and actually people <laughs> always comment that, I mean, people, essentially when people make that comment, they're essentially saying that I don't coach and I'm, I don't, I'm either not doing a good job coaching or I'm not doing any coaching. When they make what comment? When, when people say, gosh, you're, you're, you're so quiet on oh. the bench. And to me, the ultimate... The ultimate level of a coach is when you can have a self-running machine. You've prepared your players so so well that you're there just to oversee the process, not to direct it. Oh. And when you can empower your players to have the knowledge and have the tools and have the ability to self-coach that when they do make a mistake, instead of looking for you to you, they can make those corrections in-game and that is way more empowering and it's going to make them much better of a player than to always tell them what to do every single time. And my dad, he always told me, and I got so tired of this analogy growing up because he applied this to everything, like brushing my teeth <laughs> and sitting down, sitting up, you know, random stuff. He said, if you teach, if you, I mean, I, I got to get this correct. He said, you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day, you teach 
him how to fish, you feed him for the rest of his life. And that's coming from my dad who's never coached a game. Did he say it in English or Cantonese? He said it in English with a Chinese accent. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Which makes him more pronounced. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So, that's my thought on it. And, okay, there are exceptions to this rule. I think yelling can be a personal style. But, uh, for example... Coach Bernardino from Brazil, who that guy is fiery, that guy's a yeller. But it's it's because of who he is, not because there's a lack of preparation of his players. Obviously he's team won two gold medals and two silver medals. Um, but I, I think also that's the exception. Um, that's how he gets in the zone and he, that doesn't rub his players the wrong way and it might be a part of Brazilian culture where that's just a very expressive culture very passionate people, passionate about volleyball. But I think for the most part, if you have to yell too much during a game, it's, you gotta look in the mirror and think, like like Michael Jackson, you gotta look in the mirror, <laughs> look, gotta look, in the man, look at the man in the mirror and, and, you know, think about, well, what am I, why do I have to keep reminding them? Is it their fault for not remembering or is it my fault for not teaching them well enough? Oh. And the more responsible you take as a coach, the better you're going to be. Because some of the worst coaches I, I know are always blaming their players. It's like parents blaming their kids for being bad kids when they're the ones that raised them to be that way, you know? And I see this in the classroom because I'm a, I'm a teacher. So, and that's, and the, that's life, too. Uh, if you're always looking for excuses... You know, the people that succeed are those that always point the fingers at themselves. Those that don't succeed are always pointing at other reasons as to why they can't succeed. So it's just not just limited to coaching, it's, it's a life principle. So yeah, that's uh, Coach Donnie's Corner Improv. <laughs> the almost argument on the couch. So wise. Okay, the, reason why we're so even, wise. <laughs> the reason why we're even doing this session because we're having this conversation and Jamie is saying, hey, we should have like a spontaneous impromptu. <laughs> so you can thank my wife if you enjoyed Coach Donnie's Corner. And maybe we might comment in the section. Leave a comment in the section. Leave a comment <laughs> below if you want to see more of these. Otherwise, we won't do any more. Right. <laughs> Love you.